Okay, so we're going to now look at the Articles of Confederation. Like, what are the main things that you need to know about it? And one thing to know is that this this fails. That's the big thing. It fails. It may gave very little power to the national government, pretty much over war, peace, treaties, and and not a lot of other power. I mean, they had a power to raise money for common defense, but then the states had to give the money, so it was pretty pretty weak in that sense. And of course, the 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 people that created the confederation they were worried about major power of a central government like england so they wanted to make sure that the central government of the united states was very weak but that caused other problems so let's look at why the articles failed so grab the green sheet you should have like some bullet points there we're going to quickly go through and list problems of the articles of confederation that by the way are going to be fixed by the u.s constitution okay first off uh, number one no power to tax no power to tax only states could impose taxes. No power to tax. Only states could impose taxes. And by the way, if you need to, pause it so that way you can um, write down if you need to. All right, a little bit more about the no power to tax. You don't have to write this, so just don't write. Um, Congress could request money. That was it. And usually the states didn't pay. Um, and thus, no country would lend any America any money. Like America's credit was terrible because they didn't know if America would actually pay its bills because they didn't know if the states would actually pay their bills. Um, thus, the American currency was basically worthless. The paper dollar was worth just about nothing. And below, you actually see an original $50 bill um, from this time period. All right, so first off, it failed because they had no power to tax. Second one. All right, so second bullet point is no power to enforce laws or treaties on states. So basically, there was no executive branch. So therefore, if a Congress did pass a law, which required nine out of 13 states to agree, which is a very high standard, not even a majority, it's a super majority. Um, they couldn't enforce this on the states. The states could just basically ignore them. Kind of like the nullification crisis of 1830s over the tariff, um, but except there, the union actually existed. So nullification probably wasn't real. Here, nullification's real. Like state could just say, eh, you know what? I don't really care. So that's what happened. So number one, tax. Number two, no power to enforce law because there's no executive. Next, no power to regulate commerce. So states could actually tariff each other under the Articles of Confederation and often did. And this led to like mini trade wars between the states and made commerce and trade very, very difficult and was bad for everybody. So this is going to be something, again, corrected by the, uh, uh, by the U.S. Constitution. So three things so far, commerce, taxes, and uh, you, no power to enforce law. No power to raise a national army. Although the Articles of Confederation gave common defense the main reason, they still didn't like give the power to raise a national army. The states still had to like give troops to them, and they had to give the money to the national government for the troops. Because again, they were scared of a national government being strong, and they would use the army against them uh, you know, they're worried about the Leviathan, if you would. And so they made it so weak that when something happened, like Shays Rebellion in Western Massachusetts, no one could respond. Like nothing happened. Like there was no way to get a, a, an army together. So this is a really major thing. In fact, this is what prompts George Washington and other leaders to say, you know what, we got to change the articles because they are just pathetic. All right, no power to raise a national army. Next, no national judiciary. There was no court system at the federal level. The only thing you could do is appeal to Congress. They were the last resort in, in something. So there's no Supreme Court. There's no federal court. There's like no system of federal courts at all. So this is a real mess. No national judiciary. No executive. Um, the articles provided no executive. Um, so there's no way to enforce law. They did like in the absence of Congress assembled. Uh, there was like a rotating executive just to keep the government afloat and if there was, you know, problems with the country or they needed to uh, negotiate a treaty, each state would appoint one person and they had uh, 13 people in an executive uh, and like they would rotate around and one of those people would like serve as like an executive for a short term. But this is like not really an executive. It's really a kind of committee really is what it was. It was like an executive committee. Um, but it was absolutely pathetic, and they couldn't get anything done because people just argued all the time, and uh, they couldn't get a darn thing done. So no executive. Um, another weakness is that there was no um, – it didn't matter how many – how big your population was. 
you know, New York and Virginia had the same vote as Vermont and New Hampshire or Rhode Island. So there was no way to account for the fact that some states had a lot more population. It just seemed really fair, like everybody it seemed unfair, I should say. It seemed really unfair that the big states had the same voting power as the small states, which, by the way, speaks to the fact that states were still powerful, right? All states had one vote. Um, in order to get a, a law passed, um, nine out of 13 states had to pass a law, which meant that very little law was passed by the Confederation Congress. Um, and there you go. This is a quotes there. In determining questions in Congress, uh, United States in Congress assembled, each state shall have one vote. The committees of the states, any nine of them, shall be authorized to execute in the recess of Congress such power of Congress as the United States Congress assembled by the Senate of the United States. So the, oh, the committee of the states. There's what I'm talking about. There's no executive. They had the committee of the states. And you had to have nine of them agree to actually execute something, which, I mean, meant that nothing happened. Um, so all states had one vote, and it could, took two-thirds of them to pass a law. Just very difficult to do that. Um, and then here's maybe the biggest offense. If you wanted to change the Articles of Confederation, you had to have all 13 to amend. Interestingly, um, when the Constitutional Convention gets together in 1787, Technically, it was supposed to be all 13 to take part in that, and Rhode Island doesn't show up. So Rhode Island's like, you, can't, you guys can't change anything, sorry. But instead of trying to amend the articles, the states that showed up to the convention just said, you know what, we're just going to start over again. And if we start over again with a new social contract, we don't have to worry about the 13 out of 13 to amend. So that's kind of a funny way around it. But in the end, um, the Constitution replaced the articles, and it didn't, they did not have all 13 eventually. Like a couple of years later, Rhode Island will confirm um, the, the United States Constitution, but initially they just kind of went around that, this this um, this provision. But yeah, thirteen out of thirteen to amend the Articles makes it basically impossible to change it. All right, cool. So those are the things. So uh, the the, th the uh, key points of the Articles you need to stop and, and try to read over them, study them, list them in your head. Maybe take another piece of paper out and kind of write them out. See how many you can get. Um, you can also grab a whiteboard at the front and, and practice that. Once you've done that and you know the Declaration of Independence, then go ahead and take the quiz online. Um, it's on Kia.